r slash adulting. Ill conclusion 5585 says. Where do you find people worth having kids with? I'm a 27 female, who got a late start to the party. Most of my early 20s were spent trying to survive, and figure out how to do life right. I now have my own house, two dogs, and two jobs. If I had someone to split the cost of living I could easily go down to one job. The second is really more of a time killer more than anything. I'm now at a place where I'd like to settle down and find someone to have some kids with. I don't get out much and I've tried Tinder, Hinge, and Facebook dating, but it's mostly crap. If I do find somebody worth connecting with they either already have kids and don't want more or they just don't want kids. At this point it seems like it would be easier to just forego children, but I know I will regret that decision and can't shake wanting my own children. And Thomas Dude says. Just piping in to say you don't seem like you're late to the game at all. Being 27 with what you have is amazing. Ill conclusion 5585 says. Thank you I appreciate it. I'm definitely too hard on myself sometimes. Sally Dolly 777 says. Yeah having a job, just to pass time is wild glad are living comfortably, and your own house damn honestly good for you dating should definitely waited. Altruistic Sock 2877 says. Wasn't there a movement, to find husbands at Lowe's or Home Depot, lol. Ill conclusion 5585 says. My mom seriously just sent me a reel about this, this morning. Your favorite Ritelt says. If anything the universe is just a huge game of chance, which makes it simply a numbers game. Online dating may be considered trash for 95% of the interactions, but again, numbers game, talk to 100 people and 5 might be considerable. I met my partner from online dating at 27. That was 5 years ago, and we have our first child on the way. Chrisaface says. In a few of your replies, you've said that you don't really have any hobbies or interests or things that you spend time doing. I think learning about yourself and what kind of things you like might actually help you in your search to find a partner. I met my husband online. We both had really fulfilling social lives and were very busy doing hobbies and his interests made him more attractive to me. Responsedisistress57 says. This. My most successful partnerships I've found, have all been through mutual hobbies slash shared interests. I also discovered my interests a little later in life. Married now. Except since focusing on hobbies and our relationship together, we used to want kids, but have since decided we don't want to have to put everything else to the side lol. Lay 4 basis says. My wife and I met, while working our second jobs. I was a bartender, and she was a server. That was 24 years ago. Ill conclusion 5585 says. I love that you mentioned this. My second job is casual and my hours are decreasing next month. I thought about getting another job at the local brewery, and working as a server there. The Tingad Visajiva 101 says. The second is really more of a time killer more than anything. Ultimately, if the second job is just a time killer, you may want to consider quitting that job and making your new second job finding someone to have kids with, if that's important to you. If the apps aren't working for you for one reason or another, the simple solution is you have to devote more time and or effort into finding someone. That means putting yourself out there and continuing to do so until it works. There's no magic solution, where someone can wave a wand, and have your dream man show up at your door. Gloomiamoba6872 says. Or just live. You can't get the time back, and no amount of money will purchase it. Environmentaleb5391 says. I'll marry you sight unseen, no tackerbacks. It either Darissa Live says. What are your deal breakers, and what are you looking for? How physically attractive, tall and how many check marks on the list, does the person have to meet, 
before you'd consider going out with them. There's a lot of guys that have good character and are moral, but may not meet your standards. My sister has the same complaint, but she has several guys always chasing her, they just aren't seers that are super tall with a ton of money, and have George Clooney looks, etc. Point of the story is you may have to lower your standards, or continue to look. Only you get to decide what is considered worth dating, but I would personally advise you look inwardly instead of doing what many women do, which is at a certain age compile a checklist of what a man should be. It's objectifying, ironic enough. R slash adulting. The dude 734 says. How do you relieve your anxiety when you start a new job tomorrow? I'm starting a new job tomorrow. I don't even know if I'm going to like it, but I'm going to have to stick with it, no matter what for now, so I desperately hope it's bearable. What can I do to calm down? The first day is always so anxiety inducing for me, and I wish I could just deal with it without having panic attacks. Smith Nicole 663 says. First days are intimidating for sure. What I've done in the past is just simply distract myself. Usually I'll clean, or eat or watch something engaging, so I don't start overthinking and anticipating. Also, what if it's fine? Desira Pink says. Just remember that the feeling only lasts for a short time. It can be intimidating starting a new job and being around new people, but remember that the novelty will go away soon and you'll blend in as days go by. Ashton Vess says. This job is a vessel. A lifeboat. Ride the waves. It could be smooth sailing. The first day is usually a wasted day paperwork, system logins, tour, etc. Pack a lunch and a water bottle. You'll be fine. Just go along with the ride, until you get your bearings. Revolutionary Big 495 says. I hear you, and this advice will take a little work, but I promise it will work like magic, and I will explain why. How would you imagine, if your new job would be, if everything was perfect? Imagine yourself being achieving great competence, being successful, having fun, being passionate, being friendly and appreciated with everyone. Imagine the kind of interactions you wish you have with each individual cowalker etc. It works best, if you write it down. Only best, outcome but plausible scenarios, takes 10 to 30 minutes at best. The more time you take the better though. Then sleep on it. Ever heard of self-fulfilling prophecies? By imagining positive scenarios you wire your brain beforehand for some behavior patterns. Subconsciously you will try to follow the patterns you have set. If you write it down, handwritten whole sentences, it becomes more branded into your subconscious, because by writing it down you take feeble thoughts into reality and focus your mind. Takes work but totally worth it, also in the long run. Of course life is not entirely make a wish, but it does help. Tomorrow you just remind yourself throughout the day, that you'll be still learning and going slow, and holding back for a while and that's perfectly normal. Be patient with yourself as you'd be with anyone in your place. You'll be fine. Ferasiosip says. It's normal to feel that way, I advise you to try to sleep well, and remember to take a deep breath on the way to work tomorrow. Inappropriate Nudge says. I don't get anxious anymore starting a new job. But if I did, or didn't, have anxiety. I'd just smoke a fat blunt and smile. Dedeenla says. Day 2 is only 50% as anxiety provoking, and day 3 is down to 25%. So you just need to get through day one. Hunst Wunth Best says. CDBGUMMIES equals legal or another calming herb. New Throwaway 2541 says. Being anxious doesn't help anything. Medium Bug 1551 says. I also start a new job tomorrow. We can do it. I just tell myself none of it matters in the end will move. I also go for a run slash stretch. Jim Pullen says. 
usually by not sleeping. D-O-M-G I've been there so many times. Meditation. Bajalup Mibajal says. What makes me feel better is realizing that nothing matters, and we all die eventually. Alaska1111 says. I have gotten much better at this. First days are always nerve wracking. I just remind myself it's my first day I'm not expected to know anybody or everything. Don't put pressure on yourself not worth it. The short lady says. Remind yourself that this time tomorrow your first day will be done. Write down your worries and put the paper away. Look at it tomorrow night and see how few of your worries happened. R slash adulting. Content B2541 says. I'm 31 and my parents are overbearing. I'm 31 years old and I feel locked down by my parents who divorced when I was 10 years old. I'm an only child and I spend a good amount of time with my family every holiday and make sure I see them every week, if not every other week, and spend much of the day with them. I work hybrid, so I work from my to her sometimes, and eat breakfast slash dinner with her, but it seems like it is never enough. They constantly comment on decisions in my life, and if I don't see them enough, in their eyes, they guilt trip me, and make it seem, like I'm not family orientated, or they blame my girlfriend who I'm serious with, and say that we are playing house when we both own our own spaces. I'm a adult, and I do not want to sound selfish, but I want to experience life as adult who owns their own everything which could be spending time with my serious girlfriend friends, traveling, going to events etc. I do love my parents dearly, but I'm at the point where I would like to be able to grab dinner with them once a week and go home and not sacrifice whole days with them just to give them their way. I feel like balancing work, my girlfriend, friends, my family, and my own alone time can be difficult at times trying to please everyone but I would like my parents to let me live some. How do I respectfully set boundaries with them and shorten our hangout? Al Raitakia says. It's a matter of standing up for yourself and setting boundaries. You have to be prepared for them to kick off and complain that you won't give them their way, but just explain that you'd like to be more balanced in the time you give to different parts of your life. Maybe set defined times to see them and keep to that. If they insist you come over slash do something, Say no and don't give in, so they recognize you are serious. Also tell them to correct their language. You are not playing house, if you are both maintaining your own places and your relationship is valid regardless of how they think it should go. It's not easy or pleasant, but you have to take control of your life from them. Dream Realistic 2075 says. Move out. Or further away. Or tell them you got sent three states away for work for the summer. United Introverts says. As a parent of an only child, this is hard to read, because it would be so easy to do. The parents have all the time in the world to dedicate to their child. And you are already having to split it between two visits, one to mom, and one to dad. It's not reasonable for you to continue to do this. If you have your own place, why do you remote work from your mom's house? It seems like that would be a natural place to put a boundary. Seeing your parents every day at your age is probably stunting your growth adult growth as much as at their ability to separate from parenting a child to being the parent of an adult child. When visiting with your parent ask them what plans they are looking forward to next week or this summer. Encourage them to take trips and have hobbies that you aren't involved in. When leaving their house, set a boundary diary by saying this was a nice visit. See you in two weeks make concrete plans with your girlfriend or friends. And don't let your parents guilt trip you into changing them. Jack Jade 0749 says. Oh my friend. There is nothing selfish about spending less than an entire day every week or every other week with your parents, especially if you are in a relationship. I would go insane if I spent that much time with my parents. You need to set boundaries with them, so you don't end up alone with no partner. 
Dweggle says. Once per week. All day. And they are divorced, so you're doing this double? This is obviously way more than other people, who don't live with their parents, see their parents. The primary way to deal with overbearing parents is to lower slash limit contact, and put them on an information diet. If they have a problem with that well, they have no leverage, assuming they don't offer you any financial assistance, and their behavior is the cause of you pulling back. I mean honestly, what does their flexing their opinions do? Nothing. You just have to be confident about your life choices and your boundaries, because they are attempting to manipulate you with guilt, and that doesn't work on a confident person. If you don't feel like setting healthy boundaries, you can always move far away. If you don't live in the type of family that embraces multi-generational households, it's natural to see them less, so you can focus on your goals, romances, hobbies, socializing. If you were a child, or depended on them, that's one thing. But as a financially independent adult your freedom is yours to spend how you please, and spending time with them doesn't seem to be pleasing you. What does your girlfriend think of how much time you dedicate to them? Striking Math 9896 says. I just stopped going to my parents. I said I'm busy. I go once a month if that. Cause they were overbearing too, I wanted to make my own decisions. Nice remove 4834 says. I would say in my experience with setting boundaries it starts with learning that it's okay to say no. Sorry, I can't make it today. How about next week? Or, I love you, and want to spend time with you, but I have plans that day, could we reschedule for another time? And if there's ever pushback about your life decisions, then stand firm in your choices. In the past I communicated to a loved one who once criticized my plans to move abroad that, just as they once traveled to another country, I also would like to do the same. Similarly, you could communicate that, just as they created a family, when they were younger, now that you've met someone you love, you'd like to create one of your own as well, and the person you're with is who you envision. That's all for this video thank you for watching please subscribe.